Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Tonight we're checking out a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E full electric vehicle at night. So this video focuses on the interior and exterior lighting of the vehicle. Check my channel for the full overview and test drive videos. As you approach the vehicle with the key and it's locked, it does sense the key and turns on some welcome lights. And one of those welcome lights is this Mustang here on the ground that illuminates and projects from the side mirror. And it kind of a little bit of a puddle light, but mostly just for looks here. But it looks really nice, especially on nice flat surface like this, where you can see the image nicely. You also have little illuminated buttons here on the door, and that's how you actually open the doors. This vehicle is on and ready to drive and you can turn off all the exterior lights, unlike some vehicles, which there's always some kind of exterior lights on, even if you turn the headlights off. Now I have the parking lights on and you can see these white LED daytime running lights are now illuminated. Also, it kind of fades in this amber light there on the top, which is part of the turn signal. We'll see that in just a minute. It's a really nice daytime running light that's not too bright so probably will not mistake these as headlights but they kind of are like accent lighting as well so they're visible and they're stylish you can see them from the front and the sides and then you can see that amber light gets brighter here as it is a side marker as well there's a red side marker here in the back and the tail lights are also red. And they have that Mustang look, kind of like a Mustang look in a way. Has a little place there in the middle. Now, the cameras kind of make it look a little bit orangey, but they are a nice deep dark red. The tag lights are LED and they kind of illuminate the ground a little bit, which is nice if you're approaching the trunk and you can see what's on the ground before you step there. Turn signal here in the front is amber and it has this little swipey thing going on and it's not the camera, it actually kind of fades from the front to the back there. Let me turn the camera brightness down a little bit. Hopefully it'll help, because it is a bright light. It's pretty bright. This might help see the turn signal a little bit better. Uh, it, you can see it has that swiping, kind of swipes to the side in which you're turning. And it's in an amber color. You see that amber side marker is also flashing and you can see it kind of has some bright parts here in the front as well. Kind of kind of right in here and right there is bright and then that's bright. So it kind of has a segmented brightness there for the turn signal for, for the visibility on the side of the vehicle. Uh, there's also an LED turn signal indicator on the side mirror which is visible from the front the side and the back in this amber in color. You also have an amber turn signal back here. And it's the lower portion of the tail light. So the upper portion maintains that red color. And let's go ahead and dim the camera down a little bit so you can see. And it has that kind of swipey motion as well. So now it's time for the low beams and I'll show you what the headlights look like going down the road as well. So you can see it's a projector here on the outside, that low beam there. It's a very nice focused beam, very nice headlights on the road. So it's the outer portion of the headlights there for your low beams. And 
and it has a nice cutoff. When I dip down, you can see where the light hits the camera. Above that, the low beams do not blind other drivers. That's what the intention is anyway. So there's low beams and then there's high beams. So you can see the cutoff there and, it, and it's much brighter there. And when we turn on the high beams, the inner portion of these headlights are now illuminated and they are a reflector. So unlike the out, outer part, which is a projector focused beam, this one is a reflector. Let's see if we can get a good view of it here. And then there's the projector on the outside. You can see as I dip down, very bright right in there. And then as I go down, it's both lights. Cargo area, when I lift up the hatch here, it has the tag lights are still illuminated and it kind of illuminates this area behind the vehicle a little bit. And then you have, these are, these are all exterior lights or LEDs by the way. And then you have this, uh, kind of over the shoulder type light right here that shines down and illuminates the center of the cargo area. And then you have a light here to the right, which also illuminates the cargo area. So, and also the position of this light up here is not in a position to where you, when you're standing here, you don't accidentally block the light. So I'm putting my hand there to block the light so you can see. Um, when I'm standing here, it's kind of like in front of my head. So that way I don't accidentally block that light since it is in the very center. Uh, and if you did, you have the secondary light here to illuminate stuff. So I would say this cargo area, even if, with a black interior, is has an adequate, since you have bright lights and they're in the position the way they are, it's an adequately illuminated cargo area. I wouldn't say it's like excellent or anything. Um, how you can improve it would be you would have a light like this on the other side, have them a little bit brighter. Also have two over the shoulder lights. Instead of having one in the middle, have one on each side as well. And then that way, I think it would be a uh, really good cargo light um, back here. But as it is, maybe even one under here as well kind of in the, in the vehicle, kind of like a little dome light right here as well. And then it would be an excellent cargo illumination. But as it is, it's pretty much adequate. There's a backlit illuminated button here for closing the hatch. We do have a front trunk as well. And there is a single light here to the left side. It's an LED. And there's a lot of dividers kind of in the front trunk that is not easy to remove, but you could potentially remove them. But you can see how much shadows they cast. And so this light doesn't do a whole lot on the right side of this front trunk. It's only here on this left compartment. You can see really good. The rest of it's pretty much dark. There's a little button that blends in with the rest of the gloss black. It's not always illuminated, so sometimes it is, um, you know, you kind of have to feel for it. You can feel it and find it, but it would be nice if that's always illuminated, especially when you uh, have the key outside the vehicle like I have right now. It, you would think it would sense it and go ahead and at least illuminate that one button. Okay, so the inside of the back door has no illumination, no puddle lights or anything like that, no pocket lights anything the only thing it has is this little finder light to show you where the power window switch is um, so the door release and all that stuff's dark the pockets are dark everything like that and here's the illumination for the back seat all it is is 
these uh, lights on either side of the big glass roof. And it does a pretty decent job, even though this is a black interior, it does a decent job of just giving you fill light, basically. Um, it's not like there's, no, you know, you, it does go on the floorboard a little bit, but there's no floorboard illumination. There's no backlit buttons here. Um, and it's just kind of a, you know, just enough so you can get your bearings type thing and get in the vehicle and all that stuff. Um, and you can also turn those lights on independently as like a reading light or whatever if you're sitting in the back. So I would say it's, it's mediocre or below average, that kind of thing as far as the back seat illumination. When you push the button on the outside, which is no longer illuminated, um, it does show these backlit buttons here for the, you know, keyless entry, in case you need to use those. All right, so the inside of the front door, there's no puddle light. There's no outside approach light. It just has that, point, that, that horse, that Mustang that shines on the ground. Um, but I don't really see that as an approach light per se because it's not really that useful. It's just for looks. So there's no approach light. There's no puddle light. So you could potentially, you know, you don't see what you're stepping in when you're approaching the vehicle and getting in and out of the vehicle. So that's something. Uh, it does have, you can see this green light here. It's kind of flickering because the camera's making it do that. But um, that that is an ambient light which you can control the color and the brightness. Um, so I have it set to green. So everywhere you see green, uh, that is a, a ambient light in which you can control the brightness. And there's backlit buttons here on the door. The floorboard is also that green color as well and it has floorboard illumination. Backlit buttons here. This is actually the headlight switch and you can see it has off, parking light, automatic and headlights on. There's also a dimmer switch there. Now uh, it does have automatic high beams as well and it does seem to work fairly well. None of them are perfect but it does a pretty decent job. And so here in the front, just like the back, it has just some dome lights for the, the overall illumination inside the vehicle. So when you're going in and out of the vehicle, um, it does a decent job. N nothing spectacular, but it does a decent job of illuminating the interior. Now, if you had a light interior, it would help out a lot better. But with a black interior, it's, it's kind of makes it look darker than what it really is, I guess. Okay, so I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I have the door open. So you can see what the interior lights look like from this perspective. All right, let's go ahead and shut the door. Interior lights are gonna fade out. And now we're left with the ambient lights, backlit lights, that kind of thing. Now, I have the brightness turned up quite a bit on the on the camera here so you can see a little bit better otherwise it would be just kind of too dark so it's a little bit brighter than what it actually looks like in real life also there's some flickering going on with the screens and I can't adjust that out so that's has something to do with the camera and it's not actually flickering in real life okay so we have backlit buttons here on the steering wheel And it's kind of like an aqua color, kind of like an aqua looking to me anyway, these backlit buttons. These are not customizable. Here's the screen. And this is, you know, dark mode, basically night mode. And the, you see these IR illuminators flickering here. You don't see those with the naked eye. They only show up on the camera. Um, that's part of the system that keeps an eye on you to make sure you're paying attention. Um, and your eyes are on the road and stuff and the IR illuminators are able, able to see th at nighttime But also through sunglasses as well All right, so the power button is illuminated um, There's the screen and that's the night mode Backlit illuminated USB-C and USB 
quartz there. There's also a light in here, which is nice. There's also a light in the second tier down here. And it's like this 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 area is like so unusable to me cuz it's like I'd have to like get down get out of the vehicle and hunch down on the floor to try to figure out what's in there. Um but I guess some people like that compartment. But it is does have a light, which is nice. You can see illuminated floorboard and over there. It looks nice on camera. It's a lot brighter um, on camera than it is in person. I wish they had ambient lights in the back because it actually shows that on the screen when you adjust the ambient lights, but this just doesn't illuminate anything in real life. Um, speaking of not having illumination, the glove compartment, believe it or not, on a vehicle this priced, with this kind of price, has no illumination in the glove compartment. And so they've got the shifter here, has illumination, the armrest. This area has some illumination coming from up here. So there's this little ambient lights coming from up here. They kind of shine down and illuminate this area, which is a nice, important thing because it gets a little dark. When it's really dark, that little bit of illumination does help. All right, so this armrest, you lift it up and there's this light. This is an interesting light. It's just for looks, I guess, because when you roll this back, this compartment, it's this thing blocks it so that light doesn't go in here. So this compartment is completely dark. Um, the only thing that's shining in there is this very faint light coming from the top. And other than that, I mean, with my naked eye, I cannot see in there. So... The camera is making it much brighter than what it is. It's a good thing because otherwise you just see a, see a blank screen right now. Um, so I don't know why they don't have this light shine inside or maybe have that light on the other side to where when you open this up it shines in there. It's just the shine on this, I guess. All right, so no illumination in the glove compartment, no illumination in that compartment. The visors um, do have lights with the mirrors, so that's something. Okay, so let's look at this screen, and let's go here, and let's go to settings. Let's scroll all the way down to ambient light, and you can see, see it's showing lights all the way around, and it doesn't have that. It just has it in just certain pot areas here in the front. The back, there's no lights. Now, let's say I want to change it to red. So I'm going to pull the camera back. We'll go ahead and change it to red. So now the interior light's red. So everywhere where you see red is that customizable color. Even right here, under here as well, is now red. All right, so if we want to choose, let's say red, and then if we just take it and we slide it up or down, we can adjust the brightness. So we can adjust the brightness here on the screen. Um, let's go ahead and choose another color. There's like a purple color blue, green, red, and that's like an aqua color. That kind of, that kind of mat, kind of not really matches. No, that's more like a different type of blue. It's not really even aqua. And then there's orange. It looks red on camera, but it's more of an orange. And there's kind of an aqua. Yeah, okay, so that one actually matches the backlit buttons. So the backlit buttons and that light match now. So if you want all the backlit buttons to match the ambient light, you just choose that one here at the top. That looks really nice. Looks, I like that matching. But it's sometimes it's fun to have different colors here, kind of non-matching colors. Kind of looks like a, uh, an aftermarket type deal. 
or upgraded type thing. Red looks really nice. Here's the headlight pattern on the wall. So there's a high beam and low beam. There is a little notch in the low beams. So it has this uh, line there, but there's a little notch just to kind of help out with oncoming traffic, not getting blind, blinded from these bright LED headlights. So even on the low beams, like right now, um, I can see pretty dang good. And the light is either evenly distributed on the ground. Uh, it doesn't like, it doesn't seem like it's overly bright too close to the vehicle and then it fades too fast. Um, it seems like it's, you know, it's able to cast that light out right up to that line. And then that little notch is right where that oncoming car is to try to help out with, you know, as you, as you see, when we go over bumps, that line goes up and down. So, you know, potentially if you're hitting bumps or you're not on level ground, that line could go up above and blind the person, at least temporarily. So that little notch there in the oncoming traffic line just kind of helps give a little bit of a, um, a, a, a lower, position so that way it's less likely that it's going to be blind the oncoming traffic now if somebody's right in front of you uh in in your lane and now it might still you know shine the back of their head a little bit but uh, that's only if you're not on level ground like on level ground like this other than the bumps it should be fine but my visibility is great it, it shines all the way to the sides and you know it does a good job um, so you don't have to have any of the you know fancy headlight features that a lot of vehicles have like active bending and um, and cornering lights and stuff like that this just basically eliminates everything and you don't need any of that kind of thing not that that's bad to have but um, it's just it works well without it So, so far we've, we're only on, we've only really seen the, uh, the low beams. But it's pretty soon we'll get to see the high beams here. And it's a darker area up here as well. I'll kind of drive a little slower to let those cars go ahead. So there's the high beams. And there's the low beams. It's quite a bit of difference there. The high beams are very bright. And for, be, for being an electric vehicle, uh, it does not skimp on the brightness of the headlights. Definitely looks nice and bright. And I'm sure it's going to diminish your battery a little bit more with these bright lights on, but man, does it look good.